Hey everybody. So, um, if you did watch my latest story, <laughs> um, I did a lot um, on crop circles recently. Um, I've been, actually a lot of my stories have been a little bit different recently. I've sort of um, chosen a topic to talk about and then to sort of really expand um, on it. But yes, crop circles is I think what we will begin with. And there are a lot of different theories and interesting points about crop circles. And I definitely think that it is something that should be taken a little bit more seriously or at least investigated into a little bit more. So thanks for joining me, guys. And thank you for everyone who I know always joins into my lives. I really appreciate that. There's um, a lot of love in that. I just have a drink, though, as well. So I'll wait for you guys to come on. I hope you're all well. <laughs> so we had some interesting crop circles which have turned up. And like I said towards the end um, of my story, there are a lot that never ever get seen or ever get recorded um, just due to the nature of it being private land and a lot of those owners wanting to avoid tourists or people who go there to, to search and take photos and, and I can understand that it's private property and these are people who don't understand they're probably not very conscious they really think that it um, you know uh, is just people doing pranks and I really do think that there will be a percentage where they're just hoaxes there are people doing pranks you're gonna have a little bit of that you're never gonna get 100% of anything particularly in the type of system that we are a part of where there's a lot of hidden information so yes crop circles um and the other topic that i do want to actually go into i was speaking to one of my friends earlier who sent me a link to um a person's page which i do not support on here at all um i'm not a fan of his work um, and i do think he's a bit of a bully but um he did post about um different structures where he related them to being giants and so my friend was asking me if i had more information on it and if i'd researched into it and so i will take time to expand on that and i actually will share videos of that i think maybe tomorrow i can make that sort of my topic but i will let you guys a bit in on it and i'll share some photos as well so crop circles have been happening for a long time this is not new um i did probably about a week ago post that the original one was the mowing devil which I think the name is hilarious um, but that was recorded in the 1600s um, and if you go to a lot of locals who you know are in smaller sort of country town communities in Europe they will tell you that their grandparents and their grandparents before them have all had interactions or encounters or witnessed um, you know these discoveries of different crop circles <clears throat> <clears throat> do I have um, an absolute answer on everything in relation to this topic? No. It is got a lot, it, well, there's a lot of question marks in regards to it. I can tell you what different researchers have come up with. I can tell you what different mystics have come up with. Um, and I really do think that the best researchers have a combination of both. You will always have two different types of researchers, the ones that are very linear, solid in their research, but I do appreciate them. Because they will um, not leave things to personal interpretation as opposed to a psychic or a mystic. Um, so I can respect a lot of their research and I do like to follow their stuff, which is why I like to still go into a lot of sciences. And I like to relate it. I like to relate how things are in the mainstream media or, or, or whatever. Um, and then, yeah, you get your pie intuitives, your psychics, your mystics. And the ones that are able to channel information, um, and uh, I would also put indigenous or conscious t um, types of spirituality. I'd connect all of those types of things together. Um, but yes, the integration of both is probably the most reliable. Um, anyway, you'll notice that a lot of the crop circles are a form of geometry. And I think it's very important for us to understand geometry 
and it, the significant role that it actually plays within our reality within this reality where you know we have matter forming to a solid because not all dimensions are going to run like that which i have elaborated on before and i have some examples <clears throat> you can actually use these in energy healing obviously metatron metatron um and and uh, macabre you know these things are all integrated into here and this is the flower of life the one that i also blogged about earlier you can see a little bit more detail and they're quite beautiful um i like to place these around my room actually or i put my water on top of them um here's another example this is a pendant that i also wear um this has some monatomic gold in it and a number of different crystals where this was personally made and formed that is the flower of life and you also see it on the back there as well Oop. i hope you guys can see that's a bit reflective anyway there is oh there we go <clears throat> If you also research into the work of Freddie Silva, um, he goes to a lot of different sacred sites and he's very high in his mystic level of knowledge. And um, he goes to different portals and um, he channels information through and he can see things that other people can't see. Um, but he has a very interesting perspective on crop circles and um, he has used a lot of those um, geometries and put them into cards and they can actually have an effect on the human psyche which I find really really interesting um, so there will have to be a time where I actually go over the different geometries and their significance and the different roles that they play um, but there are other people who would specialize in that more than than I would um, there is a guy Robert um, oh, I can't remember his last name but anyway <clears throat> he posts a lot about mathematics because that's what it is it is it's it's math um turning into a solid within this reality um i know i have some questions but um i am just going to try and get through as much as i can on the crop circle thing you know first because i did have a lot of people um inboxing me asking about what does this mean who are making the crop circles uh you know and ask any other important information you know they were trying to you know is it is it um is it extraterrestrial is it the orbs is it you know all these different other factors so um in my opinion um i think that it's not done just by one form um, I do believe that a lot are done by the orbs and um, I have seen different videos of different craft chaf chasing orbs which have been near crop circles um, obviously you don't hear about any of these on the news um, and there was a video I believe it was in the 80s or 90s where a man filmed on, a, on an old camera an orb actually creating um, <clears throat> the crop circle a lot of people didn't believe it because it's just one of those things it's like it doesn't fit into our logical um, understanding of anything and so you know people dismissed it however his video was taken in an amount of time where it was almost impossible for him to have done some sort of cgi because it didn't exist that level of technology at least to anyone in the public it didn't exist back then so um he actually i should try and find the video and i should actually try and post it but <clears throat> sorry um the orb you could see it forming in it, and it formed it in such a short period of time so when he actually submitted the video um of the orb creating that that crop circle uh it would have been impossible for him to have gone home edited the video and done all this other stuff so i don't see <clears throat> how he actually could have faked it um so Tim's making a comment, math is the only universal language. Could it be a communication we can't interpret yet? Well, yes, I don't think it's the only form of language. I think it is a significant um, universal language that is a part of it, but I, I don't think it's the only, it's the only form, um, which some people find hard to believe. But I think in high dimensions, it also runs a little bit differently. 
I do think that there is high dimensional math. I don't think her math is complete at all. And there will be, there are physicists that do support this. So it's not just something that I'm, I'm just making up. <clears throat> there are many languages we can't interpret. Um, Linda Moulton Howe, I don't know if you guys know of Linda, Linda Moulton Howe. Um, I did have the honor of meeting her last year and speaking with her, but she believes that they um, are crop so uh, the crop circles are being created um, by like time travelers <clears throat> who are coming in and out of our timeline and dimension. Um, that is coming from her respected whistleblowers or insiders, which I believe, um, yeah, maybe some of them, them are, um, why they're leaving them on crop circles which are not permanent i don't know and there's certain things like that which make um it very questionable um but you will also find a lot of people online mystics who will go and they'll interpret the different geometries or the pictures and they will say this is meaning this this is related to a solar event that is happening you know there was an earthquake that just happened nearby was this in relation to this and and they'll sort of try and connect the dots i think most i think most are incorrect i really really do because i really think that people are trying to interpret something from a very very limited aspect of logic I do think some of these are a little bit above our comprehension at the moment. Um, but do I think that some of them are, are quite important to maybe certain things that are happening with, within our planet at the moment? Yeah, I do think so. Uh, there was a comment earlier um, also, yeah, that emotions are a language. Yes, you know, that's true as well. So it really depends on the dimension that you're in, I, I, I believe, and the, and the density that, you know, your conscious awareness is experiencing and, and able to comprehend. So Tony's making a comment. Well, if you're navigating time, you'd be able to use it as a navigational point, so long as you kept returning to that single point in time. Possibly. And we have seen different movies and different stories where these concepts have been, you know, made sense within the movie, so it's not something I would rule out at all. It would be a marker that can be used for um, any relative time travel. Mm-hmm. Some of them are very interesting, though, because they actually include extraterrestrial forms. So they actually look like if you notice, there was one of an ant or an, an, an insect. And a lot of the mystics were relating this to actual, um, you know, if you are, I don't know what level of research people are at who are watching, but then they do talk about the ant people. And the ant people are actually really, really talking about within the Native American um, cultures uh, for generations. Um, I really wish, I wish I had some examples to just flash right up and show you. Um, but there have been one where they actually showed extraterrestrial faces, um, not human definitely not human but you know had two eyes and the closest thing you could relate it to was probably like a gray um some crop circles have been decoded in some ways um through um you know binary sequences and i'm trying to remember, one in particular was really interesting and it was actually saying um it was giving us different warnings um, about um, a race of a race where they will come and they or, or they're already here and they um, they seem very benevolent but they're actually not benevolent. Another one also warned us. It was saying release the technology, release the technology, and so I thought that was very interesting as well. You guys are welcome to ask questions and make comments, um, but I am trying to just stick with crop circles for now. And for those of you who weren't tuned in um, earlier, I'll just flash these up again. These are different forms. This is the, the 
flower of life, you know, Macabre, Metatron. Um, the thing that I find most interesting about the crop circles, which you really can't say anything, there is no one who can rule this, this out, is the radiation factor. I think the radiation factor is very important because when people actually go into the circles, people who do meditations when they go in the circles, they can really tap into certain things. And the physical factor, when you, I've seen videos of this actually happening, you can look it up on different doc documentaries, where you actually, uh, when people actually go into the circles, um, they'll put their hand and all of these white dots will appear on their hand like really strong that it always kind of scary um, underneath the skin. So it's not something forming on the skin. Um, it's like the cells and that are reacting. Um, and then when they go out, it goes away. Um, so I've, I find it very interesting. People were asking me about these things that I was holding up. These have been used for energy healing and they can in different um, intentional types of um, aids. Um, this is what Freddie Silver uses for different healing and when people look at it and there's a number of different researchers actually who form different cymatics of different emotions and of different um, everything has uh, like a frequency to it so even money and uh, people use it as a manifesting tool which um, you actually can't deny some of their results um, and I do think it's a lot more simple you know our reality um, when it comes to manifesting, I think we're all manifestors. And um, if we did take time to learn some of these codes, I think we could advance quite a lot. Um, I got these from a man who was selling them. Uh, I don't have any of his information, unfortunately. Um, but you can get them, you can just look online um, and just search, you know, those geometries and plates what do you think is the significance and in, in relevance to humans in relation to crop circles um, I think there's really quite a lot I really think that the geometries are something we don't know how to interpret but they have many um, manifesting healing abilities I think that there's something that are a part of us um, Alex is saying teal swan draws these patterns yes there are a lot of people who um, download sort of information. Um, I can speak a light language. It only started about two years ago. Um, but there are a lot of people who go into these modes, these trances, where they're downloading something and then they'll go and they'll start sort of drawing different patterns and languages. And this is a real thing. This is something people don't talk about because they're embarrassed. I was embarrassed. I started speaking another thing like sounds would start coming out and I couldn't really control it and it wasn't uh <laughs> wasn't negative or anything like that it was quite um it feels uh very connected to source um and sometimes when these come through you will start moving your your hands around and you'll start doing things it's doing something to stimulate energy within you or within the area that you're in it's doing something um but my shaman always says to not try and understand it specific, like interpret it um but to just let that energy flow through you um and let whatever it's sort of happening just just to go with it and do it and, and let it yeah so i don't fight it but i think that these crop circles are a geometry which are connected to all of these things So I'm saying my friend does that. He's like a robot. Is this a light language that you're referring to? Or when they're going into a trance and they're actually um, able to put uh, these on, on paper or into art? I suppose, Tony's saying, I suppose the most important question I would have about them is one regarding morality. Are they for our benefit or detriment? And that is a very good question. Because I think that there could be a combination of both. 
and like channeling there's a lot of infiltration people have to understand that there has been aspects of consciousness which have been infiltrated so this is why i don't like going into the new age thing because you'll have i have so many people that are like we've already won we're like this and then they'll go into all these blissful states and then that's sort of it they're not sort of realizing that that's really great but there's still work that has to be done right now and um you need to be paying attention you can't just be going into your blissful states uh because there'll be things happening and uh, you you know um you might be a bit naive to what's going on um so i think a lot of those channeling sessions can appear very benevolent but they're not so they'll put a little bit of you know um it's like a trickster sort of stuff that for me validates multi-dimensional reality that if there is one thing i don't question it's multi-dimensional reality at all i just can't even from a quantum physics perspective um but when you really start going into it and you are a channeler and you are you know you do do mystic work you actually realize that wow it, it really isn't the way that you think it is it is not so linear it is there are definitely energy forms that are interacting with this reality because it's impossible for different people in different periods of time decades apart different areas different cultures channeling the same information being able to extract the same information it is impossible it makes no sense at all even by human understanding as limited as it might be currently okay so that person responded to me ah so it is channeled art and it has so many dimensional meanings yes that's correct that's correct i've seen some and i usually know when i tap into um when I see different um, drawings or writings or symbols, I know. And um, I've actually reached out to some people that I've seen online because it's saying something to me. And I know that it's coming from something which is possibly related to something about myself high dimensionally um, um, or our collective consciousness. But there are a lot of people who do it. And there's people who really, when you really research into this phenomenon, you will realize that sometimes people actually get messages and they'll be writing down this language and these languages are very beautifully very beautifully done and they'll write it in the moment there is no thinking i'll write this it's not it's like a download that just comes in and they'll just be like and it'll just come through i i remember hearing about a guy who was in japan who was for years had been writing this stuff he didn't understand it he didn't know why he was doing it but it was just something that just sort of happened and um then he got i don't know if it was he intuitively got this message and it was like you must fly to this place at this certain time at this day and go to this had a very specific instructions um and he did and he didn't understand it and he was kind of scared um you know because there are points when this happened where people you do question your insanity um but when you hear that other people are experiencing the exact same thing um you're like okay there's something about this there's something real about this and it's got to be something which is in another layer that we don't understand about reality because it's connected it's interconnected just like this symbol which is found all over the planet in apparently you know primitive times primitive knowledge and wisdoms that they'll claim that had no communication that had no cell phones that have no internet why were they all creating the same pattern why not even modern day science or logic can interpret this they were interconnected somehow and it would have been through those other layers anyway getting back to my story this Japanese guy went, he had to fly to America and the place, the exact place that he was told to go to, there were other people who did the exact same thing. I don't know if it was a meeting place where they had some sort of seminar 
or something, but he was able and he broke down and he cried. And I remember hearing about this story um, because for years he just didn't understand. He actually thought he was crazy. Um, and uh, how can you make something like that up? How can you have information just come into you and tell you to specifically go to a certain place and in a certain period of time? Um, anyway. <laughs> Could you please explain the age of Pisces? I'm Pisces and I wanted to know. The age of Pisces has nothing to do with your birth sign, uh, your personal birth sign. Uh, so I can't really go into that because it's um, it's a period of time, but it's not related to you because, oh, say for example, you get the age of Aquarius. You'll get people go, I'm an Aquarius. Oh my God, this is my, and it's like, it's, it doesn't actually have anything to do with that. Um, you know, don't feel, uh, I don't know, I think those things can play with your ego a little bit. Our crop circles like a bigger version of the Dr. Emoto water. Each has a pattern and an objective meaning from this geometric language. Yes, um, that's, yeah, that's sort of what I'm trying to say, um, that all of these things are connected, which is why I've been talking about light language and and uh, it written down or spoken because all of these things I think are really integrated with each other. <sighs> yes, so when a person is sort of going into that trance, you they don't really want other frequencies pushing on their frequency at that time um, because it's quite powerful. So you wouldn't want to, you shouldn't interrupt him. Yeah. Uh, I can really understand his frustration. <laughs> There's times where I'm in public and I want to, or I'm at work, and I sort of get this thing where I'm really plugged in, and I'm like, uh, I, I get sort of caught between these realities, and it's like pulling me out, pulling me up, and, and then I'm like, no, I've got to stay grounded because I can't function. <laughs> I have posted about the age of Pisces before though, um, but I wouldn't worry about it so much because we're pretty much coming out of it. <laughs> we're in the cusp between. Um, so anyway, sorry, I'm going to try and keep it to the crop circles. I'm really sorry. Um, just because I will be putting these videos on YouTube and so I want people who are particularly interested in these topics um, I want them to be able to locate the video and then be able to get a deeper understanding of things. So there's many different crop circles that really have appeared over time, which are um, really quite amazing um, in their form. And many are done in a very short period of time. I know that I watched a video testimonial of a pilot who actually discovered one and he was having uh, he had passengers with him at that time it was just a, one of those really smaller planes and he was flying over um, and there I don't know if they were going somewhere to have a look at something anyway it was, it was a sh very short trip and within it was less than 30 minutes I know that they had turned around and they'd come back over the same you know um, the same um, flight path and when he looked down, they saw um, a crop formation that really was not there before they flew. And it's something, this is an area where it's quite flat, you know, um, and you can really see if there is a formation. So I don't know how people can go in with boards and ropes. And then there's other people who say, oh, it's a laser technology that they're doing now. Um, you know, but I'm really sure that humans didn't have that or at least were actively using that um, at the time where a lot of these recorded in the 70s. Like, really? <laughs> Do you have videos of you doing light language? I forgot you know how to sing. I don't, only because I've been very shy about it. It's something that's still quite new to me, and I really only spoke about it to a few of my close friends. Um, I did record it on voice, um, just because I wanted to, maybe later when I was not so much in that connected zone, to be able to go over it and understand it in a... Uh, like, oh, is there patterns to this in, in what I'm doing, or... yeah. 
just to have it as a reference um, and when I did go into other modes of speaking it to be able to relate them so I don't have videos of it um, I'm still a little bit shy about it <laughs> I have to probably eventually come out about it I know that my shaman did speak to me not that long ago but a couple of weeks ago and he did say that next year actually my blog work is going to change and that it actually will be a lot more face value type of work which I already knew anyway but um, it's good to sort of have someone sort of confirm certain things or be able to tap into your timeline and I've always known that it was going to be maybe public speaking or uh, really interacting with people that's what I want that's what I've always wanted anyway um, because when you do do a light language and it's something you actually speak as opposed to write um, to written um, it actually has a, an effect on the people around you and it can affect their bio field and I've had that experience when I have interacted with people and when I'm sort of tapped in like that they can feel it it's something penetrates their bio field um, yeah okay so I'm getting asked what are their purposes I really um, I was speaking about it a little bit earlier in the video I think that there's several different purposes for um, the crop circles um, all I know is that I think that they have they're almost codes that um, we maybe have forgotten or need to understand in relation to um, geometry cymatics and all of that so Tony's saying I had one guy told me that DARPA had these capabilities to trick us even back then I think so too I think so too um, but I also think that there are there are without a doubt extraterrestrials or energy forms um, that are interacting with our reality so it can't all be DARPA he was of the mindset that crop circles and such were secret gov government projects and being tested I think some of them could be I definitely do think that about the cow mutilations which I have blogged about recently I do think a percentage of them are like that um, but I don't think all of them are and when people go it's reverse engineered technology say it's a craft it's like yes it's being reverse engineered from what from something else that they've had to break down and remake themselves so for me it doesn't shut off anything extraterrestrial at all I think we're even past the point of even doubting it I think anyone who doesn't think that extraterrestrials or the possibility of it of them are real I think that you have to be very um, sheltered or really just you know not you don't want to let anything else uh, into into your box and that's why I had to go I hate it when flat earth is saying that everything that all that all aliens are demons I think it's the most stupid narrow-minded comment which is obviously a derivative of um, a religious belief it doesn't it, it cannot be sourced from anything else and you can say oh but the the you know there was the jinn the Japanese or and they've all got different names for it and it's like yeah okay fair enough um, um, but you know if you're gonna have the Bible which is giving one message and then you know they're not I don't think you can claim anything as being completely bad bad I think that's a very low form of thinking or processing anything about reality if you categorize something as that's bad there's this is good and this is just bad everything is bad all of that species is just bad that race is just bad I mean like come on is that has that gotten humans anywhere you know we've had to try and evolve out of that type of mentality so claiming you're woke and then claiming that all aliens are demons um, it, I just I feel like there's not a very high level of intelligence behind um, your mindset so yeah Miguel is saying yeah they're very they look they're closed off 
whatever it's their choice i'm not here to save everybody and try and convince anybody of anything anymore i just put the information out there and you can take it or you can leave it but i do do it in a way where it's like you can be you know phd you can have all of this but if you cannot explain this and if you cannot overrule this theory that i am presenting to you or this factor or this phenomenon then you cannot disprove this and that's it period and that should make you have a question mark you know as long as they as long as they can admit that <laughs> no the earth is not flat and i'm not having this discussion sorry this being a simulation is more believable than the earth being flat yes guys <laughs> i'm sorry but don't get me into the flat the flat earth stuff cuz it's it's one of the most stupid theories i've i've It's just one of the most stupid theories that, that exists and, and it, I, I don't like it. The reason I don't like it is not because it scares me or because it pushes on my own theories. It, it's, it fucks with people who are actually trying to awaken and it traps them. And it's, it's just sad. It's really fucking sad. Have you tried to find any curvature? I must warn you, if you present questions um, as silly as that, um, I just can't, I just can't, like, waste energy on it. I mean, it's just, it's just the truth. Um, if you are not willing to educate yourselves about how ley lines work and how it's being manipulate, manipulated, this reality, and you're not willing to 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 research um, our connection to other star systems because flat earthers don't believe that space exists. Of course, um, I think that you're missing the point of why why would they want you to think that space doesn't exist? Like that's a pretty huge point in itself. <sighs> okay. <laughs> no they don't ley lines don't exist on a flat plane actually if you really want to get into it um it doesn't work like that at all <laughs> um this is what i mean um when flat earthers try and educate me about the ley lines working on a flat plane i'm like i don't think they understand how ley lines work i just don't I don't think how they work, understand how DARPA works or how any of these things being manipulated. This whole reality is manipulated through the Earth grids. And if you think that it's being manipulated on a flat plane, um, I, I think you need to continue researching a little bit more. I think you need to research a little bit more into astral projection um, and, um, and maybe research into how many astral projectors can tell you that the Earth's not flat. <laughs> I just don't okay anyway I'm moving on because I don't have time to talk about that stupid stuff okay so the other topic that I mentioned earlier before was the Giants and um, uh, anyway for the last comment Miguel said yes um, totally <laughs> cool I'm sorry, I just, like, the comments that, that, that surround the theory is um, very distracting because I, I can actually shut it down completely, but I'm just choosing to not waste my energy. So, yes, mud fossils. Um, and so the giants, anyway, somebody sent me these pictures of a guy who posted about the um, different structures. So you'll have different mountains, um, islands, different structures around the planet that actually have, um, a likeness to a human, um, or, uh, an animal form or something like that. Now, if you actually research into the giants, it's completely, um, unrelated to a literal form 
so oh, I just wish I had the pictures to show you um, I'll blog I'll blog about it tomorrow so you can reference it back tomorrow now the Giants are not related to this if you really look into the Giants um, research which I do believe that there were Giants um, in, in fact I actually can't exclude it from my research because there's actually credible evidence um, supporting a lot of it and um, I know that it is noted in many of the different ancient texts that's one thing you can't avoid was it literal were they referencing something else you know perhaps but um, all of them speak about giants and none of them were connected apparently because they were primitive so it's just something that we we can't ignore in our research and um, if you do go into understanding where the giants were buried and formed in the earth um, they don't look anything like the structures that this person spoke about so it's not a literal person's face it's it's not associated it's actually um they're mounds so they are mounds but they're like sort of big hills and when you do test the electromagnetics um around these hills they they have anomalies they're actually different and they um sort of can't be answered for um, but there have been skeletons found that's something I absolutely cannot ignore um, and if you go back into even a hundred years ago in the newspapers mainstream newspapers were having articles of um, giant skeletons found in blah 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 and this was happening and this was happening in different places all around the world and even though it wasn't a mainstream news um you know newspaper um, a lot of that that had a very different type of i think control at that time and a lot of them were quite straightforward to the point where you know you read back in old newspapers and you go oh my god like did they really just say that it's you could never say that these days because it's so untactful or it's very straight to the point or um you know it's very obvious that how stupid what they're saying is so they really just said what they said and um anyway so these different reports all started when you go in, when i started reaching researching into it they were being sent to a conservatory these bones so the real skeletons some of them did have pictures i believe um and i think after, i don't know what year it was but after a period of time this conservatory got bought out by a corporation a private corporation when anything is ever bought out by a private corp corporation you need to have a question mark um on that so for me that confirmed a lot <laughs> Yeah, but they really did exist and they really were being sent to this conservatory. I think it was a conservatory or I don't know if they wanted to put it into a museum or something or they were being, you know, going into scientific labs for research, but it got bought out and now the public has no access. Like you are not allowed. That's It's just disappeared from the face of the earth. You could relate to this to many different things and because... I don't I, I I can't see you know I can't put them all in the same category I can't go um, to the people who are asking this I can't go it was just the Nephilim or it was just you know uh, it was Anunnaki or it was whatever I can't put them into one category because I can't we just don't know at the moment because we don't have any access to them do I think it could have been a variation a combination of of different races over periods of time that were yeah possibly um but i just can't like i don't yeah people do talk about the you know the fallen angels and stuff i don't think that the interpretation in the bible is correct i don't think that they were satan's angels and they rebelled and they just came back down I don't think it worked works exactly like that I have actually had my shaman read into certain things so there are certain things that I know you know but I can't share absolutely everything because some people might not understand it's a little bit hard to um, just because everyone's at different levels of sort of understanding so I don't want to stumble anyone or get someone confused When a miner finds a good source of a metallic resource, they call it a vein. 
we carry such minerals in our veins, it may be possible. Th this is what my friend was talking about as well, because there was this stump which had a lot of different um, roots, like almost like a nervous system. But I think we have to understand that this planet is like is sentient and nature is conscious. So do does something have to be human to be conscious or to have these things? No. So I don't think we have to necessarily say, oh, well, if it's got this, then it must have been a living human. I don't think so. I think the interpretation in the Bible is more of an allegory. Yeah, I mean, minerals are, you know, they are where we have minerals in our body and it's all like that. And I think that the oil, oils and these types of things are the veins of the planet. And I think it's horrible that we're sh like stripping the veins of the planet, um, you know, for profit. Um, but anyway, this page was sort of suggesting uh, that it was a literal thing. And I really want to clarify that it's not necessarily literal. See, what happens is when the human eye, this is how the human eye and the brain works. And unfortunately, flat earthers don't like to, they like to rule out neuroscience. Um, but when you actually look at something, right, um, you're not actually seeing the the entire object, let's just say that. So if you see an ant, right, crawling along over there on the wall, whatever, um, you actually can't see the ant entirely. You can see the outline and its movements, but your brain is actually filling up the other percentage with your photographic memory or information that you already um, consciously are aware of. And know how to interpret and it actually fills in everything else so when you're watching that thing going because you can't the human eye can't see um, or we're not resonating at a level where we can see um, that ant crawling on that wall over there it doesn't we can't see any of those details we really can't technically speaking um, it is just your photographic memory actually filling all of those things in um, or you know the other other form other pockets that are in there Yes, so your understanding of it or what you're familiar with, yes, that's what you're actually seeing. Um, flat earthers don't understand that it's like that when they're actually looking at the stars, it's like that when they're looking at the supposedly flat plane and stuff like that. <laughs> Sorry, it's, it's very simple, it's like very basic neuroscience. But um, anyway, so when it comes to these actual giants and these formations, um, they go and they will go, oh my God, it looks like a human. It does, but it doesn't mean it's a literal human. It's just your brain affiliating with it with something that you're familiar. Anyway, I think that most of you guys understand what I'm trying to say. <laughs> you know, this reality works in a way where um, we need to maybe learn how the holographic elements actually come in, how light actually comes in, how photons sort of work within this reality and how it forms different things into a solid and all of that. So um, uh, humans just don't, we don't think about that. We just think about very linear, oh, I can see this. Um, this is a solid object. This is whatever. It's not the true nature of anything at all actually you know it's all you have to break it down on a subatomic level you've got molecule molecules you've got atoms that's what's actually creating that it's it's a particular resonance just like staring at a cloud long enough you can make out things yeah yeah you can and it's not that they don't look like those things at all sometimes they really do and it's really cool and you can take a photo of it um, Okay, talk about the Tartarian civilizations. Um, I'll try and stick with more what's in alignment with what we're... I will blog more about the giants. Um, yeah, but uh, again, I'm just trying to sort of keep them... 
not go on to two different tangents because I just um, it makes it harder for people who are sort of more focused on really wanting to learn it so if you guys have more questions about even time travel to to crop circles to orbs um, to certain places where they you know with the giants and that type of thing then then I'm happy to sort of go into that um but I appreciate everyone coming in <laughs> what are my sources oh gosh so many I don't even people are always ask about my stories and where I'm getting I don't follow one particular thing it comes from all over the place um sometimes articles just sort of pop up in front of me um or someone will say something um and yeah do you okay time travel time travel yes very interesting um time travel i believe um does exist but i don't think it necessarily revolves around um a literal like physical transportation um i think that astral projection i think that we're actually traveling to different dimensions all the time because consciousness doesn't work through the physical uh vessel necessarily when when it does these things apologize about that guys you all there okay so time is a human construct therefore you can't travel through something we created um okay i'm trying to simplify this down in my brain um it we can time travel it's just it, different people are probably going to be capable of doing different things and i think we need to understand how plasma fields can work and be created and how the macabre works because i do think it is possible um i know that people who um or levels of consciousness and energy that are quite uh, have at a much higher level can consciously go into a third dimension so i think it um can vary Time is a human construct. Um, our way of breaking it down and understanding it, yes, but um, there are different timelines because I think in the, I think that's how it works in quantum reality. I think that you can access the different information in the field. Some you can do it through astral. Some you can do it. You know, there's different forms where it's not. It's the astral body and the astral plane that can sort of go in and extract information. I do think we physically can because when you do research wormholes and portals that exist, um, we do have the ability. I think to transfer, and I, I think the the most obvious one. Now there are many, but I just it's I don't want to confuse people, but there are many, but I know that the Bermuda Triangle is probably the most obvious one. So is that making sense to you guys? That is um, an, an, an anomaly that we can sort of research um, with a little bit more credible evidence of people experiencing um, being here and then ending up in this other sort of thing and they wouldn't have been able to do it with that period of time. So I think that there are anom anomalies. I think they serve as tears or rips within like the membrane. Sorry. Is it, I don't know if it's disconnecting me. Ah. Is that making sense to you guys? I'm worried that it's disconnecting me. Sorry, because it's been going in and out. For past, present, or future to coexist in a multidimensional experience has to be its resonances. Okay, so I think that it's there's layers to it. There's the best way that I can sort of simplify it down to. Yeah. 
Is that making sense? So it's all now. There is no past and there is no future. Like that is a human interpretation. That's a third dimensional interpretation. Um, but do different timelines exist? Yes. And I don't think they disappear. So we might call that the past, that memory, you know, but it's still an aspect of consciousness which still exists somewhere at a different layer. Um, this person saying you think you've reached 5G. Do you mean 5D? Because 5G is the satellites and the radiation. Yeah, so it doesn't it doesn't disappear from the field. Deja vu can be related. It can be you tapping into those timelines, um, or being connected to your consciousness. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Um, anyway, guys, just give me two seconds. I'm going to have to, uh, sorry, I keep getting these messages um, that are coming in and I'm going to have to wrap it up. I'm so sorry my manager was demanding me to answer them straight away. <laughs> um, so I'm going to have to do this another one, but he was pretty much demanding me to come into work because they need me to do something. So I'm going to have to um, to wrap it up. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. Um, anyway, I'm going to go and I'm going to elaborate about the giants tomorrow. Um, look into crop circles. I want you guys to understand what crop circles are. And I want you to um, see for yourself, watch videos of people walking into the circles, being affected by the radiation. Um, I want you to experience all of that. I want you to see it for yourself. I want you to... Um, understand how the ley lines work, understand the situations, understand how I think that physical time travel may be possible. Um, I do think that there are technologies that may be able to pop through as wormholes. That's why I did talk about the, um, uh, the X points um, that are being researched. Um, that do show that particles can travel through different times and they open and close. I do think that um, human portal, uh, sorry, earth portals do work the same. I think that um, that physical matter can get pulled through, but they're not all the same. So I think X points don't work as in space time as such. I, I think it's, it's like particles going through a highway but I do believe that a lot of extraterrestrial craft are in plasma fields I believe that we can create an actual field which allows us to create our own wormholes I really think it's possible I really do I think that um I, I think that understanding geometry is part of the universal language and and it being supported by math but I don't think I think it's only part of it I don't think it's the entire picture but anyway, I love you guys, um, and I'm going to have to cancel all my other plans and go to work. Um, and I hope you guys will tune in again with me soon. Hopefully, I might do another one in the next few days. I've been very, very busy, so I haven't been able to um, literally have time because it's my third dimensional job. But hopefully, um, as I go forward, hopefully I'll be able to dedicate, you know, full time to doing this. And I hope that... Um, I hope that it happens. They're the goals. And I hope you have a beautiful day, guys. Mwah. <laughs>